Okay. Ballistic pendulum problems tend to be fairly important problems for physics. And because of that, I wanted to do a couple of extra examples. They're slightly different than the ones that you had in the homework. I'm going to look at the angle that it swings up to. That tends to be a little bit more common way of doing these problems. But they're very similar to the ones that are in the homework. So in this problem, we have a bullet with a mass of 10 grams. So that's 0 0.01 kilograms. That's fired towards a block that's hanging from a rope. The block has a mass of 5 kilograms. The length of the rope is 2 meters. If the initial speed of the bullet is 100 meters per second, we can find what angle that the pendulum swings up to. And so to do this, we're going to be looking at the ideas of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So the idea is to first look at conservation of momentum to figure out what the speed of the block and the bullet together are after the collision. So the initial momentum is the momentum of the bullet, which is 0 0.01 kilograms times its speed of 100 meters per second. Technically, there's also the momentum of the block, but the momentum of the block is 0. So this gives an initial momentum of 1 kilogram meter per second. After they collide, they're both moving together with a speed v. And so the final momentum is the bullet and the block together. So that's a mass of 5.01 kilograms moving with a speed v. And because it's a collision, momentum is conserved. So the initial momentum equals the final momentum. So this means that 1 kilogram meter per second equals 5.01 kilograms times V. So solving that for the speed of the block and the bullet together, you get that they have a speed V of 0 0.5. 1996 meters per second. Okay, now then after this, you're going to use conservation of energy with the kinetic energy of the bullet and the block together being turned into potential energy. So your initial case, <coughs> case one, is going to be down at the bottom where this swings. And your final case is up here where they stop. So the potential energy at point one, I'm going to let be zero joules. And so that means that I'm letting my initial height, or I'm letting my height be zero at the lowest point in the swing. The kinetic energy at point one is one half times the total mass of 5.01 kilograms times the speed that we just found, 0.1996 squared. So that gives an initial kinetic energy of 0 0.0998 joules. The kinetic energy at point 0.2 is 0 because it says that it has stopped. The potential energy at point 0.2 is the total mass, 5.01 kilograms times 9.8 times h. We need to figure out what this height is. That's what we're going to be solving for. It's not going to be the final answer to the problem though because we're not set we're not asked what height does the pendulum swing up to. We're asked what angle does the pendulum swing up to. So if we go to solve this 
we have that the potential energy at point one plus the kinetic energy at point one equals the potential energy at point two plus the kinetic energy at point two. So the total initial mechanical energy is zero plus point zero nine nine eight joules. The final potential energy is five point so 5.01 times 9.8 is 49.098 times H. And there's no kinetic energy. So solving that for H, we have 0 0.0998 divided by 49.098. We get that the height is 0 0.002 meters. Okay. Now, to find the angle that it swings up to, the pendulum has a length of 2 meters. and it swings up to an angle theta. The length of the pendulum is still two meters. The length of the string is still two meters. And we need to find this height. To get that height, if I draw a horizontal line over, the length, I have a right triangle here, the length of the side that I just marked is 2 meters times the cosine of the unknown angle. The full length that's marked in green is 2 meters. So this height that's remaining, h, is the full length of 2 meters minus 2 meters times the cosine of the angle. And so if we plug in our values, we have 0 0.002 equals 2 times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of the angle. So I just factored a 2 out. And so I can divide both sides by 2. And so I have 0 0.001 equals 1 minus the cosine of the angle. Or if I add the cosine of the angle to both sides, and I subtract 0 0.001 from both sides, I get that the cosine of the angle is 0.999, which is pretty close to 1, which is the, cosine of, the inverse cosine of 1 is 0 degrees. So this barely swings up at all. We have a 2 meter long string, and it only goes up 2 millimeters. So this isn't going to swing up very much. But if I take the inverse cosine of 0.999, I get that the angle that it swings up to in degrees is 2.56 degrees. So again, in the problems in your homework, you were asked to stop at you know, the height. Actually, in those problems, they gave you the height, and they asked you to work your way backwards to the initial velocity. This one, we're given the initial velocity, and you figure out how high up it goes. There was a similar problem to this where you had two blocks sliding along, and they collided, and they slid up a curved ramp, and you figured out how high up the ramp they went. So again, it's a similar thing, just stopping at the height that we solved, not going through and finding the angle. The other variation, if we're given what the angle is, 
we should be able to work our way backwards and figure out the initial speed of the bullet. So again, I still have the same bullet with a mass of 0 0.01 kilograms. I still have the block with a mass of 5 kilograms. The rope is still 2 meters long. But now the rope is going to swing up to an angle of 20 degrees. We're going to find the initial speed of the bullet. So it's really the same problem, but working it in reverse. So one thing that I need to do is I need to figure out what this height is. So just like I had before, this string is 2 meters long. So this full distance is 2 meters. This side here, you're given this angle. It's 20 degrees. The side that I just labeled is 2 times the cosine of 20 degrees. And so this height is going to be 2 minus 2 cosine 20 degrees. So 2 minus 2 times the cosine of 20 degrees gives a height of 0 0.1206 meters. Okay, so this, again, this is the problem in reverse. So I know how much potential energy is stored in the block when it has completely come to rest. So I can work my way backwards, and I can solve for the initial velocity that they have when they have collided. So again, it's not the velocity at the very beginning. It's going through and finding the velocity after the collision. So I'm going to use conservation of energy. So again, I'm going to call this position 2. I'm going to call this position 1. So the potential, I'm going to let the height be 0 at the lowest point, just like in the last problem. So now the potential energy at position 1 plus the kinetic energy at position 1 is going to equal the potential energy at position 2 plus the kinetic energy at position 2. The potential energy at position 1 is 0. The kinetic energy at position 2 is 0. So I have 1 half times the mass of 5.01 kilograms times the speed after the collision squared equals the total mass, 5.01 kilograms, times 9.8, times the height of 0 0.1206. So if I go through <coughs> and I find my potential energy of 5.921 joules, and I multiply by 2 and divide by 5.01 to get v squared and take the square root. I get that the speed after the collision is 1.537 meters per second. So again, then I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at the momentum after the collision. So that's that block moving with speed v. And I'm going to set it equal to the momentum before the collision. So that's the momentum of the bullet, which is the mass of the bullet times v0 times the momentum of, or plus the momentum of the block, which is zero. So my initial momentum is 0 0.01 kilograms times the initial speed v0, which I don't know this time, 
Again, plus zero, because that's the momentum of the block. My final momentum is going to be the mass of the two added together, 5.01 kilograms, times the speed that I just found, 1.537 meters per second. And that gives me a final momentum of 7.7 .7 kilogram meters per second. So conservation of momentum tells us that the initial momentum of the bullet has to equal the final momentum of the bullet and block stuck together right after the collision. After it starts swinging up, then we have a change in momentum because we have external forces. But right during the collision, if we look at right before the collision and right after the collision, then the momentum is conserved. So we have 0 0.01 times V0 equals 7.7, .7, where that gives an initial velocity of the bullet of 770 meters per second. So it's significantly faster than the last problem. The last problem it was 100 meters per second, so this is almost eight times as fast. And that's why it swings up to a 20 degree angle instead of swinging up to a couple of degrees. Again, these ballistic pendulum problems are very important types of problems to be able to do. And problems like this where you have conservation of momentum and conservation of energy together, in general, are important problems. So the problem of the bullet that passed through the block and the block was connected to the spring. It's not exactly the same as this problem, but it's a very similar idea where you look at momentum to look at the velocities, to relate the velocities before and after the collision, and then you're using some type of energy to solve for one of the unknown velocities. For that one, the two objects don't stick together, so you have to look at some things separately, but it's a similar type of idea where you use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy in the same type of problem.